Hi, and welcome back to Cooking Live with Kristen. This is episode 10, and uh, we'll wait a few seconds for people to pop over from pre-chat and notifications before I tell you what we're making today. Hello, Kiranjeet and Thea, thanks for joining live. I do not have my um, assistant with me today. Marlon's not here, so I will do my best to try to follow along with questions in the live stream on my computer. But in between doing stuff, I will have to come back to it because I won't be able to read and chop. So uh, if you're joining me live, please say hello. If you have questions throughout the live stream, please feel welcome to ask. If I can't answer them live, I will come back and read the comments as we go. Um, but it's just gonna be a little more challenging without my assistant today. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees already. All of the recipes that I'll be making are already linked in the video description. So if you want to get the supply list, everything is there already. Hi, Joe. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Kiran G. Thanks for joining live. So I want to get started, though. And uh, for so what we're going to be making is my pancetta roasted broccoli. Then we'll be making mahi mahi with. Uh, chimichurri sauce and we're going to be making mango salsa too. All of the recipes except for the um, mahi mahi are on my website already and all those links are here. So to start the thing that's going to take the longest here is the broccoli to be honest with you and that's because we have to render out the fat in the pancetta first. So we're going to need a half of a pound of pancetta. You can buy it in the deli section of your grocery store. I believe Boar's Head makes it. And I just tell the um, person behind the counter to leave it in a chunk. You want to score the piece first because there is a lining on here and you want to take that off. First time I did this, I didn't take it off first and that was not fun. We had to pick that paper out of our mouths the whole time we were eating. So now you want to cut this into chunks and the technical, let's see, I like to do it with the um, serrated knife better. The technical term would be lardones, which is little rectangles, but you could do that, you could do cubes, you could try to be perfect about this, or you don't have to be perfect about it. I'm not really precise because I'm not a master chef. I am a home cook, but if you wanted to do it um, more precisely, you could. G generally speaking, you wanna have cubes that are around a quarter of an inch, but if they end up being a little bigger, what will happen is it just takes them longer to render out the fat. What do I mean by rendering out the fat? And also someone's asking about um, pancetta. Pancetta is an uncured bacon, and you can find it in most grocery stores. I've looked recently in several stores to make sure that it's easily accessible before I did the recipe, and I found it in all my grocery stores that sell like, um, that sell boar's head. So if your grocery store sells boar head products, you probably have pancetta. Or higher end stores will have it too. Um, if you don't can't find pancetta, one of the questions I get asked often is, what else could I use as a substitute? Well, obviously you could use bacon. I would use thick cut bacon so that you can get chunks like this. Or you could use ham. You could even use deli meat ham if you wanted to, or you could use like a whole ham and cut it into chunks. Uh, any of those will work. And then I also get asked, what if you don't eat meat? Can you still make this recipe? Yes, you just won't have to uh, start with roasting the meat or rendering the fat out. You would just start with the rest of the ingredients. And I'll tell you when we're at that stage how you would uh, do it if you were skipping this step. Ah, Renee's son is 27 years old today. Happy birthday. Yeah, I have yet to meet somebody that doesn't love this recipe. Even people that don't like broccoli love this recipe. And I, it's so popular that, uh, at least at my house, that I make it with three pounds of broccoli at a time because it flies out of here. Trying to go really fast to get this in the oven because I want uh, this is going to take the longest amount of time. After that, I will come back and look at the questions again. If you have any questions about what I'm doing or substituting, please let me know. I'm happy to help whenever I can. 
Yes, it's, uh, I find pancetta in the lunch meat deli section where they sell boar's head. I do not find it with bacon. That is correct. I don't know, can you even see where I'm cutting? Oh yeah, is it showing up on camera? I think so. If you think that my camera angle is wonky or anything, let me know. I'm just trying to do the best I can on my own here today. Um, but we can certainly fix anything if something doesn't, you can see, okay, good. I didn't wear glasses the last time we did these shows. So it must be, this must be the first one I've done this year, is that right? Wow, has it been that long? This year has flown by though, hasn't it? Okay, we're just about done here. You know, it's, it's very tempting to not be precise about this, but the bigger the chunks are, the longer it takes to do. So the incentive is to try to get this moving quickly, right? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to get this in my roasting pan, and I'm using my biggest roasting pan because we're going to be putting three pounds of broccoli in it later. So first I want to get this in the oven. My oven is already 300 to 300, preheated to 350 degrees. I'm going to set a timer for 20 minutes. And hopefully in 20 minutes, the fat will have rendered out. And what that means is that as it roasts, the fat will literally melt out of the pieces of pancetta and they'll end up turning crunchy and so delicious. You don't want it to be soft and gushy at all. That means that the fat hasn't rendered out yet. So we'll start that, wash my hands. The other thing, I think I mentioned that I get this three pound bag at Costco. The other thing that I love to buy at Costco is frozen fish. All of the fish that I buy at Costco ends up being under seven or eight dollars a pound and comes um, freeze, uh, what do you call it when it comes in the bags? Shrink wrapped, whatever. Anyway, I've been throwing the fish over here but they all come individually wrapped like this. So mine are thawing, so I'm gonna set that to the side because what I wanna do is make a chimichurri sauce to put on the fish before I bake it in the oven. And if you've never made chimichurri sauce before, OMG, this is some amazing stuff. Pretty much the whole thing gets done in a food processor. And again, if you want to see any of these recipes, they're all linked in the video description. Okay, so you know what, we're gonna need garlic for just about everything we're doing today. So I think I might do all my garlic at once here and then pull some out of the food processor and save it for the other two dishes because I really do like to Try to save time whenever I can. As you all know, cooking is a huge investment in time and any time I can do things to make it more efficient, I do. As you know, I have only a household of two people at the most. A lot of times I'm just here by myself. And so it ends up being a little more, you have to be a little more creative about how you cook so that you don't have food waste. And so one of the things that I do is make big batches of things and put some, make meal prep, like put them in individual meals containers and then freeze those meals. So I'll keep out however many I think we're going to eat over three days and then put the rest in the, in the freezer and then pull them out when we need them. So I'm gonna need three cloves of garlic for the chimichurri, three cloves of garlic for the broccoli, and one clove of garlic for the mango salsa. So I'm going to put seven cloves of garlic in here to start. You'll also notice that when I make chimichurri sauce, I do this also when I'm making pesto or any other herb-based sauces, is I do things in I do things in layers because I don't want the uh, delicate herbs to get crushed up as much as I want, say, the garlic to get crushed up. So I put the garlic in first or anything that needs a little more pulsing. And then after that, I, and, and you know, put things in as they make sense that way. 
and then at the very end I put in my fresh herbs and I usually try to avoid liquids until I've stopped the food processor because otherwise it will just puree the herbs and I like to have a lot I like to have a little bit of texture in, in my chimichurri one two three four five six and that applies to my pesto sauce too okay so we've got is this the seventh one then I think that's seven okay so Yeah, my mahi fish is a pretty dense white fish. Very lean. Okay, so we're going to pulse the garlic first. There, then the garlic's done for everything. So I'll just pull out a couple of containers. Here we go. So I'll do a little bit in one container for the salsa. I'll just do a little bit, like a small clove. And then I'll split this up for the other two dishes. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next up in the chimichurri, sometimes I do green onion, sometimes I do white onion, sometimes I add, um, well, what else? I've added red onion to it before. I basically just put in whatever sounds good, and this time I'm, and you can add parsley with your cilantro if you want. Today I just feel like adding some green onions to there as well, so, I mean, you can make it your own. I'm gonna cut those up just a little bit more. The other thing that I like in chimichurri that Marlon doesn't like is um, capers. So I'll put a teaspoon of capers in there too. All right, so now we can grind this up again. Okay, then last up will be three batches of herb, fresh herbs, and it could be I use, uh, I, you could either use a combination of cilantro and parsley, or you could do all cilantro. The only thing I wouldn't do is just all parsley. You really do want the bite of the cilantro in there. But if you are looking to substitute for your taste, like let's say you don't like cilantro, then you could do all parsley in here as well. trying to do this as little as possible to get the uh, fresh herbs chopped, but not pulverized or pureed. Okay. I want you to see it's still rather dry in there. See how it's still dry? If we added liquid at this point, it would puree, it would turn into a green smoothie and it is not what you want. So what I would rather do now is grab a bowl and mix in my wet ingredients. I thought I pulled out a bowl, there is the bowl. Okay, so now I'd rather add my dry, wet ingredients in a bowl and that way I don't run the risk of this turning into a smoothie texture. It does smell amazing, Lucy. It smells absolutely incredible. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so our rest of our ingredients, I'm going to put some now, they, I think pretty sure that the recipe said lemon juice, but I mix and match lemons and limes depending on what I have at home, so that's no big deal either. Uh, we're going to add some oregano. 
about a half a teaspoon, some cumin, about a half a teaspoon, and then red wine vinegar, at least a tablespoon. We're gonna be adding red wine vinegar and uh, lime juice. And then I will, then I will, uh, and we're gonna add olive oil too, but let's get the limes in there first. Is this on camera or not on camera? I can't, I can never tell. Um, I originally had chimichurri on steak too, uh, but I've since I started making it, I put it on everything now, <laughs> and Marlon does too. When we have a batch of chimichurri in the house, it's amazing on rice, it's amazing on pasta, it's good on a baked potato, it's good on chicken, pork, fish, seafood, and obviously steak. It's classic on a steak. It's so good on everything. And I think the key to getting it a little saucy is adding the olive oil. It ends up giving it a nice shininess, a nice smooth silkiness to it, and uh, makes it much easier to spread. All right, let's get some salt in there. I'm gonna start with half a teaspoon. and then uh, see if it needs any more. All right, we're gonna mix that through, grab some olive oil, I would say about a quarter of a cup. And look at how saucy and shiny and delicious that looks now. Can you see that? So yummy. Okay, I, my mouth is watering, I can't wait to taste this. Oh my God, <laughs> it's absolutely delicious. So good. Okay, so now we can um, spread some on our fish and get that started in the oven. I've got six pieces of fish here, so I don't know if they'll fit in one. Uh, where did the scissors go? There they are. I don't know if it'll fit in one pan or two, but we're going to put them in the pan in the oven, same time as while the broccoli or as the pancetta is cooking for the broccoli always like timing things to cook at the same time, another way to be efficient in the kitchen. you could smell how fresh it smells in here. All of the herbs, it smells so good. And you know what doesn't smell? The fish. It's not fishy at all. I love that about Costco fish. And it doesn't make any sense. I don't know how or why, but it's just, it's the best deal in town and the best quality. Okay. So now I will put some of this. Now what, to make sure that I don't contaminate the chimichurri on the fish, what I'm gonna do is do a little dollop on each one with the spoon that I'm putting in the bowl. You don't want to touch the fish with that spoon and then put the bowl, put the spoon back in the bowl. So I'm trying to be really careful about that. Just getting a little bit on each one, kind of dropping it on, because I wanna be able to save this and use it for lots of other things. So now that I'm done with it, now I'll use the spoon to pat this along the fish. I think you can see that, right? Okay, and now these are ready for the oven too. Okay, 
those will take about 20 minutes, but I do have a very handy meat thermometer that I keep, and that's also a magnet, so I keep it on my fridge, and I'm able to check meat to make sure that everything comes out the right temperature every time. This one we touch to fish, so we'll put that in the sink. These I'll put away too. Okay, so now let me stop and make sure that I haven't missed any questions. And then we'll get started on the mango salsa while everything else is in the oven. Ah. Oh, for someone who has made a comment that um, cooking and baking are different because baking requires exact measurements and cooking doesn't. Here's the thing about cooking and measurements though. You have to learn the rules originally to then know how to break them. If you just guess on things all the time, you'll have a lot of trial and error. But once you do get the hang of cooking, it can be less precise and can go by feel, absolutely. Where baking does is more of a science and has to be precise from the get-go. But I do believe that bake, there are rules for cooking too, and it's about learning the rules before learning how to break them. And that's why there's recipes, right? So I have, and so if you want to try any of my recipes, they're linked in the video description, try them, but you may still want to modify them, just like we talk about in knitting and crochet patterns too. You, it's a starting off point. There, here's the rules to make it like I make it, and then you can substitute based on what you can find or what you like or your diet requirements. So lots of ways that you can still and that's why we talk about substitution too. And I mentioned lots of ways to substitute for different things, like whether you bake it over pancetta or, oh, here's another example. We're going to be making mango salsa today. And guess what? What if you don't like mango? What if mango isn't in season by you? What if you want to make it with something else? Well, here's the good news. Mango salsa could easily be pineapple salsa. It could easily be, I actually did tangerine salsa one time that was amazing. I have that recipe on my website as well. So I'm gonna use mangoes today and mangoes are not the easiest thing to cut. However, we're gonna do our best. So as you may know, there is a big pit inside of a mango. So what I like to do is try to cut down one side of the mango's pit. So the pit is right there and then try to do the same thing on the other side. Wow, look at that, I got two good sized pieces. So then I can cut a little bit more along here. These are really big mangoes. Okay, so that's as far as I got into this one. So now, the other thing is you can try to peel them first. You can try to peel them out of the skin if you want. These are a little on the crunchy side, which actually works really well for the salsa because it gives you some texture. I'm not gonna be peeling this that great today. I'm peeling it kind of like I would do a cantaloupe or a watermelon and that's because they aren't very ripe. It's still delicious. I've had, I had a friend that from Trinidad and Tobago, she used to make a spicy salsa, kind of like a salsa. She used to put um, cayenne pepper and chili powder and different smoky flavors in with mango, and then we would just eat it as a snack like that. It ended up being more of a savory snack, and when she made it like that, it was often with underripe um, mangoes like this, where it was still crunchy. It was so unusual, but really delicious. Has anyone tried that before? A mango salsa is wonderful on fish, absolutely. Absolutely delicious. It's great on rice too. It's great on anything. I'm not gonna be making rice during the live today, but uh, I'll probably end up making rice for Marlon's meal preps. Mine won't have rice in because I've been eating no carbs for a while now, but 
he probably will want some pasta or some rice. And honestly, I think he'll like the mango salsa and the uh, chimichurri for that. I will be making steak in the next couple of days though. When I was at Costco last, I picked up some uh, flap steak too. And so our leftover chimichurri will be for that. I always try to make big batches of things so that there are leftovers, right? So a sauce that goes well with a couple of different dishes can be you. I mean, we can, so like a, for example, the chimichurri, we're gonna do it with um, the fish dishes. We're gonna do it with the steak dishes. The mango salsa we're going to use for some pork tacos later this week, as well as with the fish. And another thing I wanted to mention about meal prepping too, is that, you know, you make one big meal like this and then you've got what, 10 meals, six or 10 meals in containers in the fridge. Here's the thing. I don't like to do that where I walk in the fridge and there's only one choice, right? So how meal prepping I think works the best is when you've done something like this, meal prepped a dish, and then did that a couple of times, and then there's at least two different dishes that you can eat in the fridge. Does that make sense? So where you put some of them in the freezer and some of them in the fridge so that you have choices. Otherwise, it's kind of like the old fashioned leftovers, right? And who likes to eat the same leftovers six meals in a row? Nobody does. So I'll often have uh, mini frittatas going, in there and then something like this for lunch and then another dish for dinner so like by tomorrow I'll have the pork tacos probably in the fridge or the steak and then we'll have a choice of fish or a meat for any of the meals that we pull out of there so the, the key to make it work really well I think is to have choices in the fridge and be careful about what you think you'll eat in any given time and make sure you put the rest in the freezer so it doesn't go bad. I'm gonna try a piece. All right, that timer means that our pancetta might be ready. Hopefully it is. <laughs> My glass is steamed up. Okay, it is not quite ready yet. As you can see, there's it's not very brown or crispy. It's still got some of the soft fat in it. So I'm gonna put it back in. It's probably gonna take another 10 minutes. And that's because my lardons were a little bit too big. Anyway, we've got plenty of chopping to do with the mango still. All right, let's see. Should probably take a look. Thanks, Thea. I do have a lot. Would you believe that I actually uh, had a tennis lesson since the podcast this morning, too? And I'll still be working till probably 10 o'clock tonight. Um, yes, I do have an Instapot. I do. Okay, where was it going? I need to get another bowl. That one won't work. I'll get one of these bowls here. Sorry, I dropped something. Okay, I want to get a bowl out to start adding my mango. I think I made these a little too big. Nah, half inch is good. Uh, I'm gonna cut it just a little bit more. I think I was starting to talk, you know, once you start talking, I don't think I chopped these quite small enough. I'm gonna chop a couple more. A couple of them are too big. So basically you're gonna chop up three mangoes for this recipe. And if you follow the link to the recipe, uh, you'll see that I used Vidalia onion last time when I made this. And today, or yesterday when I went to the store to prepare for this, I bought a red onion, because I thought a red onion with the yellow mango and the green cilantro would be really pretty. Uh, so I ended up going with a red onion this time. But you can add whatever kind of onion you like. Could do green onion too. So here's our first mango chopped up. We're gonna chop up two more, about a half inch. Those are about half inch pieces. What am I making? Uh, the recipes for everything are in the video description. I'm making pancetta roasted broccoli that's already started in the oven. I'm making roasted mahi-mahi with a chimichurri sauce. 
with the chimichurri sauce we made already as well. And I'm all, what else? And now I'm making mango salsa while everything else is in the oven. Yeah, I think color and texture are both really important in food. Um, one of, there's a recipe on my blog too for rainbow quinoa salad. That is, oh, so pretty. And in that salad, I made a point to try to find lots of different foods that were represented in the rainbow. So pretty. It was delicious and pretty. And it was all veggies that kept their crunch. So it made a great meal prepping salad too because you could, um, leave it in the fridge and it didn't get soggy. That was amazing. You probably, um, everybody has different tips for cutting mangoes. Uh, these ones are not very ripe, which is making it a little different for cutting, but that's all right. It's gonna be so worth it. This is such a delicious salsa. And like I was saying earlier, please feel welcome to substitute other fruits for this. Fruit salsa is amazing. Basically, we're kind of doing pretty much the same thing you do for making tomato salsa, but substituting a sweeter fruit for the tomatoes. Think about it, tomato is a fruit too, actually. So we'll be adding the onion, the garlic, the cilantro, the lime juice. Oh! Getting my, <laughs> I'm starting to salivate just thinking about fresh lime juice in here. Mm -mm, so good. Who else likes? Could you use frozen mangoes? Um, it, once you thawed them, if you like the texture, I don't see why not. I have never thawed frozen mangoes before, and I've never done it with frozen ones. But um, you could always give it a try and see if you like it. And if you don't, go back to fresh. Sometimes the grocery store sells mangoes already sliced. That would be kind of fun too. Then you would just have to, you know, do your own dicing, but at least they'd be peeled and sliced already. Because as you can see, this is, a, this is probably the most labor intensive part of this whole meal. <laughs> the broccoli is one of the least labor intensive. It takes the longest, but it's all hands off. We didn't really have to do anything for the broccoli. We just throw it in there. Um, and the, putting the broccoli in the broccoli dish will be the quickest part of that dish too. Anyway, that should be happening soon. I can smell the pancetta now, so I know it's getting close to being ready. And wait till you see how quick the meal goes really fast then. These are such big mangoes. We might even get by with just doing two mangoes for today. These are some of the biggest mangoes I've seen in a long time. Okay, if anybody has any questions, please feel welcome to ask. Oh, we've got four more minutes. I guess we could keep going. Yeah, we'll do one more mango. See, even I try to take shortcuts sometimes. <laughs> Sharon hates cutting broccoli. That is a messy job. Yes, it is. I agree. It's not the easiest. Uh, same with watermelon. It's just so messy. I don't like to, it's not fun to cut things that you have to clean so much afterwards. But anyway, it still take fresh over frozen. That's the other thing. Uh, I would also, I think that this particular broccoli dish is better with fresh broccoli. You could do it with uh, frozen, but the thing is you would want to make sure that you dry it, th thawed it, and then dried it off really well because you don't want your broccoli to be soggy in this kind of a dish. I think that's the case with a lot of roasted dishes. When you're steaming, it's one thing. Frozen broccoli is fine for that. Uh, another thing, you could uh, absolutely substitute cauliflower for broccoli in this dish if you wanted to do something different. The pancetta and the garlic and the lemon juice would all be delicious on roasted cauliflower too, or any other hearty vegetable. Really wouldn't work with spinach because spinach is so delicate. Uh, but you know, if you wanted to use a heartier green, you could probably do it with kale too. I think kale would be delicious also. 
Does anybody have any um, other um, questions about substitution? I think any hearty green or any hearty vegetable. What is mahi-mahi? It is a Hawaiian fish, actually. Mahi-mahi stands for, um, in Hawaiian, it stands for strong, strong, because they are such strong fish. And it's a delicate white meat. I think they're also called dolphin fish um, in the fishing world, and they are really brightly colored fish. They are like neon yellow, neon green. They're absolutely gorgeous. And they're some of the fastest fish in the water. Okay, we've got our three mangoes in here now. I think that's gonna be, that's a nicer amount. And I'm going to start with a half of a red onion because again, these are really big too. And that's the other thing when following a recipe. You know how we talk about substituting sometimes or knowing when to make modifications or break the rules. And that's when you realize that your mangoes are huge, or they're bigger than average, or your onions are bigger than average. You may end up not needing a whole onion or the full amount of mangoes. You might want to adjust based on size. Mother Nature makes fruit and vegetables in all sizes, right? And depending on whether something ends up being large or small at the store on the day you go shopping, you may end up modifying. So I'm going to start with a half of an onion here. And what I like to do is really finely chop my onion, a lot smaller than the size of the mango. I like the little bits of onion to kind of like bury themselves in and around the mango. I don't want the same size chunks. And the great thing about the onion in here is that with the lime juice and the salt, it really will take the edge off of the onions the longer it sits. This is another salsa salad that sits really well in the fridge over several days, so it will not go bad. It's not something you'd have to eat same day. It's incredible on anything throughout the week. Oh, chips. You don't even need <laughs> to have a meal to eat this. Just eat it with some chips or even some celery sticks if you're not doing carbs. Mango salsa is just amazing. Okay, so you see how small I got my onions? Real tiny pieces. Because I want it to just kind of sit inside the mangoes. Okay, we're gonna go check everything else out in here real quick. Now that the timer went off again. All right, I left my oven mitts over here. That wasn't a good spot. Okay and pull my glasses up so they don't steam. Okay, this is looking much better. You see how these are browned up now? So now I will put in the three cloves of garlic and the three pounds of broccoli. nightmare. So anyway, just be careful. <laughs> and so I'm tossing everything together. You want to get some of that, the oil from the pancetta wrapped around the broccoli. If you were not adding pancetta, this is the time that you would add garlic and olive oil to the pan, heat it up first, and then toss your broccoli in the heated olive oil and garlic. And now we'll pop it back in the oven for 10 minutes. Check my fish with my meat thermometer. All right, we're 160 degrees. These are good, so we can pull those out. So I'll show you how this looks. Doesn't that look delicious? All right, so we'll set these up here. 
Did I set the timer yet? No. Timer. Okay. How long you keep the broccoli in the oven depends on how crispy you like your roasted broccoli. I like mine pretty crispy. Uh, so I go about 10 minutes, but I just noticed that I could have probably chopped those up a little more. So because they're bigger pieces of broccoli, they will um, probably, it'll probably need maybe 12 or 15 minutes, but I still like mine nice and crunchy. If you like yours a little, uh, little more cooked, you could go another 10, 15 minutes beyond that. So just want to check on it. How come I'm not using the chopper? I don't know why I didn't use the chopper today. That's a good question. Okay, so we'll put a little bit of garlic in here. And then we've got one more batch of cilantro. Where'd my other knife go? I've lost another knife. It was here. Ha, oh well. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a whole bunch of cilantro, but I'm gonna chop this Try to chop it nice and fine for the salsa. I think I didn't bring up the chopper because I was thinking that everything was going in the food processor, not remembering that the mango <laughs> wasn't going in there. I love how much of these meals have raw ingredients in it too. Anytime I can make a sauce or uh, some sort of accompaniment to my meal with raw veggies, I feel like it adds an oomph of um, healthiness. So with the chimichurri being raw and the mango salsa being raw, I feel like it just adds a nice healthy component to meals. It's so, and so flavorful too. Okay, so we'll add that. Okay, what else goes in there? Lime juice. And then we'll add salt too. I'm gonna to start with three. I think I'm gonna do four limes. These are small limes and they don't feel very juicy. So again, this is where you would be, you know, making decisions on your own from a recipe and that's depend, and so it depends on how fresh are your limes? How juicy are your limes? Uh, you might need three or four or two. I watched a video recently where they um, experimented with seeing which way you juice a lime does it yield the most juice. So one lime they rolled on the counter first before cutting it open. Another lime they put in the microwave to warm up a little bit. And then the third lime they cut just in one of these presses. And it turns out that this is the way that yielded the most juice. I thought that was really interesting. Have I missed any questions? Should I be scrolling back? If anybody wants to tell me, I will scroll back if need be. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a new spoon. Start with a half a teaspoon of salt. How fresh and delicious does that look, right? And look at all the beautiful colors. We've got the purple red onions, we've got the bright yellow mango and the green cilantro, yum. The other thing that I brought out to put in there, which is optional as well, is jalapenos. And I wanted to talk about them before I decided whether I was adding it. Where did I put mine? Dang it. All right, well, maybe mine won't get jalapenos then. Oh, here's one. Okay, so I wanted to talk about jalapeno. We've got a few minutes anyway because we're still waiting on uh, the broccoli to get done before we plate all this up. So what I wanted to talk about with the jalapenos, and if you like peppers, great. If you don't like peppers, skip it all together. If you like a little bit of heat, just use the pepper and not the seeds from inside. So. That's how I like it. I like a little bit of heat, but not a lot. So what I'll do is, could have put, you can put gloves on before you cut these two if you're worried about touching your face. 
Okay, so inside here, the majority of the heat is in the white pith and the seeds, the seeds especially. So what I'm going to do, am I on camera for this? I'm going to pull that out. There we go. So I've pulled everything out of the pepper. I just have the pepper flesh itself. And then I'm gonna to try to cut it as small as I did the red onion, if not smaller, because you don't want anyone to get huge chunks of jalapeno in the salsa. You just want it to give a little bit of a kick, not a big kick, a little kick. So I'm gonna slice it real thin and then chop it in the other direction as well. I mean, these aren't even a, an eighth of an inch. These are a sixteenth of an inch. I'm trying to do as tiny as my fingers will allow me. <laughs> and keep in mind, this wasn't in the recipe, right? If you're following along the recipe that I have linked in the video description, you'll notice that jalapeno isn't in there. But yesterday, when I was planning this meal, I was at the grocery store and I felt inspired to add a little bit of heat this time. You can do it differently based on the kind of company that you're making food for. Are you making it for people that like spice? Great, add it. If you're making it for people that don't like spice, don't add it. And if you like a lot of spice, then you would, keeping, then you would be keeping the seeds in there as well, which I don't. Okay, it's time to taste it. Let's see if we've got enough salt in mine. Mmm. Oh my goodness. The sweet mango contrasting with the spicy and the herbaceous and the lime and the salt. It is such a beautiful flavor explosion in your mouth. Oh my gosh. It's perfect. And it will only get tastier the longer it sits too. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. All right, so let's see how we're doing on time. We've got a couple minutes left for the broccoli. I should probably grab a bag here, pull together some of my gar, oh no, I'll do a bowl. A bowl will work better. All right. All right, does anybody have any questions while we're waking, waiting for the broccoli? And we'll be plating everything up in just a minute. Did anybody feel inspired to try any of these dishes today? Does this look easy to do? Does it look hard? Does it look confusing? I'm pretty sure other than pancetta being something that you may or may not find in your local store, everything else here is just basic, basic stuff that you can find in any grocery store. I want to clean up a little bit so we have room to make our plate. I am starving. And it all smells so good. Yay, Sabrina's inspired. So is Thea, wonderful. I know it gets boring cooking day in and day out, and um, I think the key to keeping it exciting is to have a lot of fresh flavor. So making salsa that is fresh, raw ingredients, and the chimichurri sauce, it's fresh, raw ingredients, and combining those with things that you do cook is just a great way to mix things up and get lots of fresh flavors and lots of fresh, healthy vitamins in your food, too. All right, one minute to go. I could start plating up the rest. So we'll start with a piece of fish. And I'm going to spoon a little bit of the chimichurri, a little extra chimichurri over my fish, or on the side or a little bit. I like to have a little bit of the fresh. I know we did the cooked on there, but we'll put a little fresh with it too. And then we'll add some mango salsa. Again, if you were doing this with carbs, you would want to put some rice or some pasta or a baked potato on your plate too. Oops. All right, I need both oven mitts for, I lost my oven mitt, there it is. <laughs> I'm 
broccoli is lightly roasted, not heavily roasted. I love how bright green it gets. This color makes me so happy. It's going to be, you know, it's not raw, it's cooked, but it's still got a little bit of a crunch to it. And oh, that pancetta looks amazing in there. Okay, get some of that on my plate. Can you tell I'm starving? <laughs> All right, so here we go. We've got mahi-mahi with a chimichurri sauce. We've got roasted broccoli with pancetta and mango salsa. Why don't you see the fish too? If you haven't had mahi-mahi before, it's a rather dense white fish. Can you see how it does flake, but it has a dense meatiness to it. Very good. Oh. Marlon's going to love this. Mmm. The fish, because it's a dense, meaty fish, it's very rich. So the richness is cut with the bright, vibrant chimichurri sauce. It's such a great combination. All right, a little bit of pancetta. Mmm, mmm, mmm. With some broccoli. Mmm. I forgot lemon juice. Okay, so the last thing that I forgot to show you is that we sprinkle some fresh lemon juice over the broccoli right when it comes out of the oven. So, let's move that with my oven mix. And it, fresh lemon juice, fresh lime juice, whatever, whatever you're gonna put on it is fine but it just brightens it up so much and it just, it contrast, excuse me, it contrasts with the richness of the pancetta and it goes so well with the garlic. And honestly, I think broccoli tastes amazing with lemon juice on it anyway. I'm using limes, but you know what I mean. There is so much flavor going on in here, oh my goodness. Okay, so now we've got all that in there. We can toss it around. All right, so I'm take one more bite and then I wanna show you one more thing. Mm, 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 mm. So, see this cupboard up here? You wanna see what I have up here? This is, this is where I store all of my meal containers. You can find these in my Amazon shop, the black ones or the bright colorful ones, it doesn't matter. These are so, so helpful for meal prep. I never have food spoilage anymore because I make up proper meals. I'll put some fish in here, I'll put some mango salsa, I'll put some chimichurri, I'll put some broccoli and pancetta, and I'll stack them up in the fridge and they're ready to go. And then any of extra meals that I don't think I'll eat over the next three days, I will pop those in the freezer and pull them out next week to eat them as well. So great healthy meals that you can pull out and have ready anytime the key to staying healthy for me is convenience and if this can be yeah would it take us an hour to do this today how long have we been here almost an hour so it took an hour to prep all this but now i've got i don't know eight meals eight ten meals that i can prep and have ready to go i have more broccoli here than i have fish which means the broccoli will get used for other meals this week as well and that's fine everybody loves my broccoli I, we could eat bro this broccoli at any meal anyway thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me i hope you got some ideas hope you got inspired if you have any questions about anything that we talked about today please leave them for me in the comments and don't forget all the recipes you can find linked in the video description as well let us make time to create share and inspire today and every day have a wonderful day and i'll see you tomorrow Bye-bye.